they call it camp number 344. <laughs> See? And they gave us a U number, which the U stands for unallotted number. See? So they gave us IDs that prove that we are a member, member of a tribe. See? Which we are not citizens of anything. Yet, they draft us in World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Iraq, now over there. See? So that's what they're doing to us. And this is the current uh, ID they gave that to us. See? Right here. So, as you see, there's a U number right there. See? So now, I'm a member of this tribe just like uh, an organization. <laughs> so they treat us like an organization, a member, you see? And then, uh, uh, we don't say United States member, American member, no, we said U.S. citizens, see? <laughs> and here they treat us like this way. So my... Uh, uh, number here is the U number, is the enrollment number they call it. So it's uh, U2298-1. See? So I'm known in Washington as that. See? Then, on the other hand, they gave me a social security number. Now, how do you like that? So I have a do whatever. <laughs> See? So my social security number, it tells it right here. 503-64-65-68. So I got two identities in D.C. See? So they know me as that, 503-64-65-68. Then they know me as my enrollment number here. See? But out of that, I am a Lakota. See? A Lakota, is that what I am? And all this past 500 years, he doesn't know what I am. And he doesn't understand. That is why he gave me those numbers. Henry Hospital is a Henry, South Dakota, Henry Agency, the Indian Reservation, a spiritual place. No, it ain't no spiritual place. My grandpa said a reservation is made a place for us to die. United States make many promises, and he kept them all. He promised to take our land, our language, and he did all of it. <laughs> See? So we are dying here. Every week, my people, they bury their dead. Every week, five, seven, ten, every week. This picture here, that's my uh, second oldest, Alfred. Uh, he's the one that lives here, him and his wife and his kids. You know. He's the, uh, the Sundance leader now. I'm training him to be, one day he's gonna take uh, full responsibility of the Sundance and uh, the camps, you know, like that. So, you know, he peers and he, everything. He sings, he runs lodges, you know, everything like that. And that's one of the, like I call the future leaders. You know. He's got a good heart, you know, really good heart. And uh, so these young fellows here, uh, you know, they go into the sweat lodge. Some of these, they already went up on the hill. For example, the one here in the middle, that's my nephew. He already did four days and three nights without food and water. Very big. And so has the other one. That's my son and this is my son. See, this is the youngest of all my sons. <laughs> so they're, they're, you know, they're picking up the ways. And, you know, but they're still young. And it, a young person, it's very hard for a young person to live in this uh, mainstream life here. Because there's a lot of distractions. So uh, sometimes a young man's strength is not that strong. <laughs> See? 
And these ones may be the last ones to, they're at Bear Butte too, so you see the Bear Butte. They might be the last of the seventh generation to hold on to the ways. See? That is the reason why they're up there. See? In 1997, they tried to stop the Sundance. Law enforcement came in. See, the world don't know out there. ATF, but the black helicopter came. United States Marshal came. United States FBI and the state troopers and the BIA police officers and the OST police officers, they come to stop the Sundance in 1997. Mr. Swallow, you don't stop the Sundance or you go in jail. So I said, looks like I'm going to jail. See? These things happen, but the world out there don't know. How can that happen? The United States Constitution says you're protected, but no. It says in there, the United States Constitution only applies to the United States citizens. Remember that. The original writing over there, it does not apply to Indians, except for Hawaii and Alaska. See? No, that's when Custer, so they came in. And uh, the only reason why they signed the treaty is because the United States cannot win. That's why they signed the treaty. The Drunken Treaty of 1868. See? In 1868, for Laramie, they got the Indians drunk and they have them sign the treaty. But the eight, uh, 1851 treaty, uh, Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull, they all went to the Cheyennes and Arikaras, the headmans, they signed that. See? But uh, when, when they went back to Washington, they don't like it. So what do we do? Give them, get them drunk and have them sign it. So they, anybody signs the 1860, hold their pen, they give them a big shot of uh, uh, alcohol, liquor. You know? <laughs> so that's 1868 treaty is not a, a good treaty. That's a drunken treaty. Long metal drunken treaty. <laughs> Fort Laramie, see? So up till today, <laughs> my people are staying drunk because they stay within the treaty. <laughs> and I'm one of the last ones. I think there's only eight of us that left. Eight of us in this whole Lakota, Nakota, Dakota nation, there's only eight of us that have the full knowledge of the uh, Lakota that's left and could speak the Lakota language fluently the old language and then another language and today language, see? So Lakota language changed three times, three times, see? So there's only a few of us that could speak that language, see? Even today, my children, they understand, but they hardly speak it. My grandchildren know. And I try to teach them, but the school interferes, <laughs> see? And they made it so that you have to have the education to survive. If you don't have that education or the high school diploma or the degree, college degree or, or the GED or whatever they call it, then you don't get no job. And you cannot survive. I, I don't have a job today. Or I don't get no help from the BIA or the local agency or the state or nothing. I get no kind of income from nobody or nothing, but I'm still here.